right axis. We can name it because it's the side that's higher. The higher axis is on the right-hand side, so this is a right axis. Now, what two motions, if this is the axis of motion, which two ways can this sacrum move? It could move this way, around this way, or it could move backwards this way. So what you're going to name is which way does the sacrum face depending on which way it's going. So when the sacrum moves this way, which way is it facing to the person, their right or their left? The left. This motion here is left rotation on a right axis. So that's the left on right. What if instead of going backwards like this, the sacrum decided to move this way? Which way is it facing now, to the person's right or left? Right. So in that example, you have a right rotation on the right axis or the right on right. Those are the only two motions that we're going to see out of that axis. But remember, the sacrum also moves on the opposite axis, so on the left axis. And if this time the sacrum were allowed to come backwards this way, the right on right rotation on left axis. So that's the right on left. And so the last one is if it was to spin down this way, it's a left on left axis. Those are your four named motions, three, four. Right on left, left on left, left on right, right on right. Yes? So is the second part always the axis? Yes, the second part is always the axis because it's the motion on. The way the test is described, it's, it's a thigh thrust. So we are going to be imparting an um, anterior to posterior force through the thigh, trying to create um, shearing at the SI joint that would reproduce the person's pain. So in this case, if I wanted to test Riyadh's left SI joint, maybe I'm suspecting his pain um, arising from the left side of his pelvis, the SI joint region, I'm going to do the, left, the thigh thrust on the left. The test is performed with the therapist standing on the opposite side. What you're going to do is you're going to passively bring the person's thigh up to about 90 degrees. Is You're going to place your hand, really your stabilizing hand, over the SI joint itself. So in, again, if I'm going to look at the left side, I want to bring my hand under. So I'm on the sacrum, but the pelvis is free to glide over my hand. Okay, that's very important. So your hand's more like this. You don't really want your hand, your thenar eminence, blocking the ilium, because then what we're going to do is we're going to push through the thigh to create the shearing force. But if my hand is stabilizing the pelvis, all I'm going to be doing is pressing the ilium. I'm going to get a lot of hip compression, but I'm not going to get that shearing at the SI joint. Okay? So we want our hand to be in this position here. So when I push through the pelvis, through the thigh, we're going to get that good shearing. Okay? We're going to take our hand. We've got to locate. I locate the way I would do this is I just find the person's PSIS, and I just make sure my hand is medial to that. Um, do me a favor. Um, Make sure you're medial, and then the person comes over your hand, and then all you're going to do is just a, an anterior to posterior force through the thigh and just get an assessment for, does that reproduce your pain or your symptoms at all? Okay. My, hand's more, my hand's more like this, and what I try to do is I try to get my thenar eminence right in that space. Distraction test, the person's going to be laying down. You're going to locate the ASISs. Go to crisscross your arms, place the center of your palms on the ASIS, is. so try to get on the medial side of the ASIS with both hands. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to try to separate that pelvis. And what you'll notice is I'm giving the force, but I'm also doing it a few times just to double check to make sure. You're trying to get your hand here and here. And then what you're doing is you're trying to distract the pelvis in both directions. You're almost out flaring both ilium. Okay? Again, positive is, it's a pro these are all provocation tests, so we want to reproduce the patient's concordance signs. The compression test, what we're going to do is we're just simply going to um, push through the pelvis, almost in flaring it. Okay, so again, if I wanted to test Riyadh's left side, he's going to be laying on his side with his left side up, and all you're going to do is find that ASIS again, just come over the top of it, so lateral to it, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to place a downward force through your hand, 
The idea now is you're in flaring it, and again, we're looking for reproduction of the symptoms. So that's the compression test. Gainsland's test, I'm gonna have you lay on your back, is we're going to try to uh, rotate, I should say, the anominates both directions, maximum, one direction, and then we can tease the other direction. So for maximal posterior rotation on the left, what I'm gonna have, what the test is going to be is, his leg is going to be maximally flexed. I might even have the person help me with that and hold that there, while at the same time maximally extending the hip on the opposite side. If you feel like you're not getting full rotation with the hip extension, which you can have, which, and then you can bring this leg just slightly off the edge of the table, and again, just try to, so I'm maximally posteriorly rotating the left while maximally anteriorly rotating the right ilium. And then you'll perform the test the opposite way. Okay, you'll extend this one out while flexing this one all the way up. And that's going to be the Ganslin's test. Again, if I wanted to get that excessive anterior translation, I can have the person off the edge of the table. So, so because both are moving at the same time, I wouldn't think of this as I'm um, testing one side over the other because any, either of those motions could produce pain if either side was happening. Now for this one, I think it is important to stabilize the opposite pelvis because we're really interested in what's going on at the SI joint. We don't want the rotation through the spine, okay? But again, this is something that can be positive in individu individuals with hip dysfunction, so be careful interpreting that test. The sacral thrust test, you're gonna be laying on your stomach, is we're just creating an anterior shearing force through the sacrum. So you're gonna use the palm of your hand, and what they describe is really at the level of about S3, okay? So you really wanna be in the center of the sacrum. All you're doing is you're just pushing straight down at that point. So the whole, the whole sacrum is just going anteriorly all at once. If you're too high or too low, you risk creating more of a rocking motion, which is not how the sacral thrust test is described. It's described to move the whole thing down. Again, you could find the PSIS is come to the center that's gonna be roughly S2, so S3 is gonna be just below that. And then all you wanna do is you're just gonna give that anterior force, that shearing, Assess, does that hurt? No. Okay. And then you can even give it a little bit of a thrust at the end to see if that produces their pain. So instead of just going in and just pushing down real quick hard, kind of get an assessment. How does the person tolerate that? Because if they're saying, yeah, that really hurts, ow, you got my pain, you've already got your positive test, you don't need to do the thrust. But if you're working your way up and the person's like, well, yeah, well, I, I can't tell, and you can give it that little thrust at the end to see if that, that brings on there. Test of the test, now this is not part of the cluster. Remember that, the Haber test is not part of the cluster, but the Haber test is performed in prone. Now the test was described in the study to be done at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees. You can go and perform, you know, at 10 degrees maximal hip external rotation and see if that reproduces your pain or not. If it doesn't, you can move out an additional 10 degrees okay but it was at that 30 to 50 degree range just maximal external rotation at the hip at 30 degrees or more it did a pretty good job of identifying those people who would have three out of five symptoms if the, if the Haber test was positive or, or if the Haber test was negative it did a very good job of identifying who would have two or less positive on this on this one A couple of times I want to get a good understanding for how much is the ASIS moving okay now let's do the other leg good remember from our pictures before maybe about three degrees of motion okay so don't look for big movements but do look for some the sacral motion test and we're gonna palpate the bilateral s1s we're gonna have the person perform backward bending and what I want to feel for is Generally, do both thumbs seem to go anteriorly about the same amount? And then we're gonna ask the person to do the same thing into side bended, and when you side bend to the right, assess for that ipsilateral forward, so when they side bend to the right, look for the right side to go in, and the left side staying relatively still. And when they side bend to their left, look for that left side to go inward, but the right side to stay relatively where it's at. It's the prone lifting test. So you're just lifting that person up off the pelvis up off the table. Now, we're not lifting their whole leg and their whole body. We're not trying to create big lifting motions, but we're just trying to get a sense for 
How stiff is that motion? And does that reproduce the person's concordant sign? Could be valuable information to have. While in the prone position, you can also do the sacral rocking and the sacral quadrant test. The sacral rocking test is an assessment for, for flexion or nutation and extension counter nutation of the sacrum. And the way you're going to do that test is you're going to take your hypothenar eminences of both hands. You're going to place your hypothenar side of your hand at the base of the um, sacrum. And then the, the inferior hand is going to be more near the apex of the sacrum. And then just like the um, test sounds, you're going to rock the sacrum back and forth. So you're going to put pressure through your right hand and then your left hand. And then you can keep going back and forth, essentially rocking the pelvis back and forth, but getting this, an appreciation for maybe how much nutation, how much counter nutation is going on there. That, that's an assessment of nutation, counter nutation. But do you remember all that right on right, left on left, all those? So we're going to assess those with the sacral quadrants. Test the four corners of the sacrum all one at a time, OK? So to assess for the right upper quadrant, you're just gonna place your hand, it's gonna be a dummy thumb technique, so your hand's gonna be over the person's spine, the thumb is gonna be right on that superior corner, in this case, the right corner of the sacrum. Your opposite hand's gonna come over the top, over the hypothenar eminence, and you're going to just tilt the person downward. And when I'm on that upper right corner like that, the thought process is, I'm pressing down this way, so this is the motion that's happening. This is assessment of the left on left motion. When I go to the opposite corner on the other side, it's the same dummy thumb technique. I'm going to press anteriorly, so right now my thumb's here. It's pressing and it's doing this. So it's the right on right motion. So I got my left on left and right on right. So when I come to the inferior corners, okay, so I just did the superior corners. I'm coming to the inferior corners now. It's the same technique, except now my thumb is on the inferior quadrant. I'm pressing down. And when I press down here, it's going to be left on right. This is the left on right motion. And when I go to the last corner and I press down, I'm pressing here. This is going to be the tilting motion I get. So it's the right on left. Test all four for stiffness, quality of motion, onset of any symptoms at, e at each different corner. The side lion ilium medial, the person needs to be side lion facing you. We're going to assess for how much motion we're getting at the SI joint. So the idea is to come in with your finger, palpating finger, get on the joint surface as best you can. And then with your body, you're going to use really like the meat of your forearm right over the pelvis itself. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get that medial, almost remember that compression test we did? What I'm doing is you're going to press through the more anterior portion of anterior half of the pelvis with that forearm to create that in flaring effect. And the idea is you should be feeling with your finger maybe how much motion's getting there. And remember with in flare motions, we can get maybe up to three degrees of the ASIS. So you might see, feel some appreciable motion of the ilium there.